I'm Aaron Rutten, and today I'll be demonstrating how to generate amazing artwork using the power of AI with the Vision FX plugin. This plugin is compatible with Corel Painter, Photoshop, and more, but today we'll be focusing on how it works with Painter 2023. This plugin seamlessly integrates with your creative software to allow you to transform your own images or create one of a kind images from a text prompt or a source image. Unlike many of the other generative AI apps, this plugin is installed on your local computer, so you don't have to be online to access the plugin, and your data remains private. And best of all, it is available as a one time purchase, meaning that you are not locked into a subscription to use the software, nor do you have to pay per image generated. Quick disclaimer this video is sponsored by Distinct AI, the makers of Vision FX. As always, all opinions in this video are my own. If you'd like to follow along with me, you can download Vision FX at distinctplugins.io or get it from the store within Corel Painter. Before we get into generating anything, let's first go over the system requirements for this plugin because it can be quite power hungry. Vision FX is powered by stable diffusion, which means that you will need a powerful CPU with 64-bit support and a modern GPU or graphics card with at least eight gigabytes of RAM. Since 2016, I had been using the NVIDIA GTX 1080, which is a pretty good GPU but unfortunately it's not modern enough to handle Vision FX effectively. I don't have a precise list of which cards are supported, but any of the RTX NVIDIA GPUs should suffice to run this plugin. I upgraded to an RTX 4070 and the difference in performance of Vision FX is night and day. This is because the newer RTX cards support AI features, whereas the GTX was introduced before all of these generative AI tools existed. You certainly can use Vision FX with an older GPU, but it will be much slower to generate images. You'll also need Windows 10 or 11. Mac is not currently supported. The size of the installer is on the larger side at a little over 4.5 gigabytes. It may take some time to fully download. It comes packaged as an ISO file, so you'll need to extract it using something like 7-Zip, which is free. After installing 7-Zip, right-click on the Vision FX ISO and choose 7-Zip Extract. The files will uncompress into a folder revealing the installer file. After that, simply double-click on the installer EXE file and follow the instructions to install the plugin. The plugin will automatically install into the appropriate folders for your host applications such as Corel Painter. Next, launch Corel Painter and open a test image to play with. It can be anything you like from artwork to photographs. I'll choose an image that all Windows 11 users should already have. It can be found under C, Windows, Web, Wallpaper, Sunrise. I selected image 29. The plugin will only process the currently selected layer, so be sure to save a copy of your work and then flatten the image by merging all of the layers. After that, look in the effects menu and at the bottom you should see the Vision VisionFX plugin. Open the plugin, and in a moment, Vision FX will be ready to use. Your image will open in Vision FX, and you can use the UI to edit the image. At the top of this panel is Get Inspired. This opens a gallery of images generated by Vision FX, so you can get a feel for what it can do. As you can see, you can generate all sorts of genres and subjects. You can even emulate the styles of famous artists like Van Gogh or transform your work into specific mediums like paint, pencil, and more. Below that, you'll see a text box. This is where you can enter your prompts, which define how you want to transform your image. You can see a sample prompt, which is fairly descriptive. Being descriptive and using powerful keywords helps VisionFX give you more intricate results, so you'll want to aim for something like this. However, it will still work with shorter prompts as well. Before we tinker with any of the other properties, let's just do a test run with the default prompt and see what we get. I am using a modern GPU, so I can enable process with GPU to take full advantage of my graphics card. Unless you have a modern GPU, enabling this may not do anything to speed up the process. Next, click on Run, which initiates the generative diffusion process. Five iterations of the image will be processed one at a time, and each iteration will take anywhere from seconds to minutes depending on your computer hardware and the output settings you chose. Be patient if you are on a slower computer. You can see the progress status overlaid on the generated thumbnails in the bottom left. Should you need to stop the process, simply click on stop and in a moment the generative process will end. You can also close the plugin window to stop it. 
Once all five iterations have been generated, you can toggle between them to preview each image. There is a nice before and after slider, which makes it clear precisely how the image has been changed. As with all AI-generated images, you shouldn't expect the first run to give you the results you want. It will take experimenting with various text prompts and settings to get something you are happy with. Each time you run this plugin, you will get a different image. It might look very similar, but the details will be unique. The results are very random, which is a good thing because you'll have more freedom to make one-of-a-kind images, but it can feel a bit disappointing if the initial images don't match your prompt exactly. In terms of image quality, I'm using a somewhat low detail setting. This can be increased, but it will affect the time it takes to generate each image, so we'll come back to that so we can progress through this tutorial more quickly. Whichever thumbnail you have selected determines how many more iterations you will generate when you run the plugin again. For example, if I am on the final thumbnail, then when I run the plugin, I will only replace that one iteration. If I happen to stop midway, I'll continue generating images from that point on. Before we explore what the prompts can do any further, let's go over the remaining properties of this plugin. The settings section is where you can choose how to apply the text prompt to your input or the image you have loaded into VisionFX. There are info buttons you can hover over to get a sense of what each control can do, but we'll explore these one by one. Strength controls how much your original image will be transformed by the text prompt. A low value will only slightly affect your image, whereas a higher value will make it unrecognizable. There are 100 values, so this is a way to both blend the effects with your original and create randomization. If I set this to 100 and run the plugin, you'll see that I get an image that looks pretty much as the text prompt describes it, a Van Gogh Starry Night painting. Therefore, if you want to entirely generate an image without basing it on an input image, this is the way to do that. We'll explore this method in more depth shortly. If I set the strength too low, nothing will happen other than you'll get a slightly randomized version of your original image. It's not identical in terms of detail, but color and composition-wise, it's about the same. It's not until a value of 20 that I start to see the image look more like a painting. At 50, I get something that looks even more painterly. The details are now all unique, but the input image I loaded serves as a guide that keeps the general composition the same. There is still land covered in trees above a lake, but now, rather than mountains in the distance, I might get clouds. Next is Text Guidance Scale, which controls how strictly the plugin follows the text prompt. Right now it is set fairly low, so the changes I've made to the image have been more subtle. But now if I crank up the scale to 25 and run it again, my results are going to look like a painting without any photographic elements. Again, this can be used to blend your input with your output or to randomize your results. The next property is starting seed, but let's come back to that. Let's look at steps. Steps control how much the image is processed or diffused before it is complete. In other words, this is the quality setting of the image. A low value will create sloppy results with low detail, but the images will generate faster. This can be useful to experiment with ideas before attempting to generate a more detailed image. Setting this value higher produces the best quality results with sharper details, but it also takes much longer per image, especially so if the other properties are at high values as well. Although the downside is that you'll have to wait longer, all of this is being processed on your computer rather than in the cloud so there are advantages to that. Let's return to starting seed. You'll need to reset the plugin to access this. This is a 10-digit number which has kind of a technical explanation, but I will attempt to summarize. Let's start by entering 10 ones. The quantity of digits in this number implies that there can be a very large combination of seeds to choose from. I'll enter drawing of a man wearing a gray hood, dramatic, portrait, detailed, photorealistic. The commas help to separate different descriptive terms. Then I will set strength to 100, text guidance scale to 25, steps to 75, and run the plugin. As you can see, I get five different versions of this character. When I click on each of them, the selected seed increases by one. They each look unique, but they share a lot of similarities like hair color, for example. So what does a seed do? Generated images start as random noise and grow into complex images. Each seed is a unique noise image, which serves as a starting point for anything I generate. 
If you want to generate roughly the same details in an image while experimenting with other properties, the seed will sort of preserve those details. To give you a gardening analogy, a seed for a plant will always grow a plant, not an animal. Therefore, if I start with a plant seed, I'll always get a plant. But the type of plant and the details of its shape, color, leaves, flower, etc. may be determined by other properties. I'll copy that text prompt, reset the plugin, use the same text prompt and settings, and then use a different seed. I can randomize the seed with this button, but let's use three ten times so that we're seeing similar results. I'll run the plugin again, and as you can see, I get a character who has all of the traits I specified in my text prompt, but with a different theme overall. This time, these guys don't look as much like the previous versions since the seed value changed. Again, selected seed increases by one for each iteration. You can use this number to save a seed value you want to reuse again to get roughly the same results. Here's a pro tip. Use the Windows screen snipping tool to capture the seed along with your prompt and settings. Let's reset the plugin, enter 10 ones, and use the same settings and prompt. Now I get five iterations that were close to the ones I generated with that same seed earlier. I can tweak the other settings without losing the basic features of that seed. If you happen to have a collection of iterations with different properties or text prompts, different options will be selected when you click on each thumbnail. Because other factors add to the randomization, using the same seed won't give you exact duplicates. Therefore, if you want to keep an image you generated, be sure to click on the Save button. You can only save one image at a time, though. Once you click on Save, the plugin will automatically close, and the image will be updated in Corel Painter or whichever compatible application you are using. You can then work on the image, or just save it as any format you like. If you don't want to degrade the quality of the image, I recommend using PNG over JPEG since JPEG will add compression. It's also worth mentioning that if your preferred art program is not supported, you can always import your saved image into it from one that is. It's also possible to save an image and feed it back into VisionFX for multiple passes. I'll use the same text prompt, but this time I'll set the strength to 50 and leave the text guidance scale at the default. Now you can see that I get iterations that are very similar, but some may look slightly better or closer to your vision of what you want. I can then save that and continue adding passes to further refine it. I can even change the text prompt to add in something new or different. I'll change the prompt to digital painting of a man wearing sunglasses, increase text guidance scale, and run the plugin again. Now you can see I get basically the same character, same pose, same color scheme, but with sunglasses. As you are working, you might see a not safe for work icon over one or more iterations. This happens from time to time, even on harmless images and prompts, so just be aware that is normal. Adjusting the strength will allow me to keep more or less of my original image. That's all for the properties. Now let's discuss how one might want to use these generated images. First, let's see how VisionFX performs with a variety of genres. Let's start with the most challenging genre, and that is portraits of people. I'll load a photo of myself as the input image. The background has been removed, which will help conserve detail for the main character. I'll enter realistic portrait of Vince Vaughn, acrylic paint, palette knife strokes. I know that sounds a little strange to add celebrity names, but that's the most effective way to guide vision effects to create a likeness. So as irritating as it is when people compare you to celebrities you look like, or at least they think you look like, you can finally put that to some good use. Without this guidance, you get faces that tend to be more distorted. I'll also use a lower strength and text guidance scale, so I preserve more of my own details. I'll start with lower steps, so I can find a combination of settings that works. Then I'll increase the detail when I know I'm on the right track. I'll run this, and we are presented with several wannabe Aaron Ruttons. None of them look exactly like me, which could be the effect you want. It's not impossible to get a likeness that looks like you, but it does take a lot of luck and effort. What worked well for me is slowly changing the values to gradually sculpt the likeness. I'll save this and use Corel Painter to mix this with the original of myself, and now I get a blend that looks more like a painted self-portrait. While generating a self-portrait is challenging, it's quite easy to generate unique faces that do not exist. 
This can work well for character creation. I'll create some other faces using celebrity likenesses. Another thing to be aware of is that unless it is trained specifically for faces, most AI image generators struggle with correct anatomy. If you are running into issues generating people, what I would aim for is getting parts of what you like, and then manually correct any mistakes in Photoshop, or merge multiple generated images together. For example, maybe I like the eyes and nose in one image. I can save that image, render some more iterations, then splice two or more images together in my art application using a layer mask. Let's try another genre of art. I'll use this portrait of myself as the pose for an anime style character. For the prompt, I'll use in an anime style, detailed portrait, watercolor painting, cartoon, cell shading, manga, comic art, vibrant color. It's going to take a lot of strength to get it to take on an anime style, so I'll use about 60. As you can see, it's sort of a mixture of anime and photography. I can try to describe myself in the text prompt, which may give me a more accurate caricature. And of course, if I don't need this to resemble my input image, I can set the strength to 100 and just generate anime characters as much as I like. How about wildlife? How does VisionFX handle that subject? Let's try a photograph of a tiger in tall grass. I'd say it does an okay job, but be sure to check the anatomy of animals, because like people, they can be subject to inaccuracies. I'll feed the output back into the input, and use the same prompt to further refine the tiger. Next, I'll feed it back in again, and this time I'll define the style with tiger drawn in colored pencil, vibrant colors, drawn in a sketchbook. I'll also increase the strength to 70 for a stronger effect. Now you can see how I generated the tiger, then made art out of it. Architecture is another popular subject. Let's see how VisionFX handles that. Let's go with ruins of a space colony, medieval architecture, stone, blocks, starry void, aerial view, concept art, detailed. This gives me some interesting results that I can easily refine in VisionFX. Throughout this demonstration, you've seen that there are many ways to use these generated images. If the image you generate is satisfactory, you certainly could use it as is, but many artists will want to at least put their own touch on the image to make it their own. You can combine generated images together to create composites, you can use photo painting or cloning to make the image look more painterly, or you can use the generated image as inspiration or as a reference to make a painting from scratch. I prefer to use generated images as reference, but there isn't a wrong way to use this software, aside from being dishonest and claiming that you hand-painted something that you really generated. Depending on how much AI contributed to your work, it might be good to give credit to the Vision AI app wherever it is appropriate. That covers the basics of getting started with VisionFX, but there's a lot to learn about choosing effective prompts, refining generated images, generating specific subjects, and image generation best practices. Hopefully this video got you started and you can learn more as you go along. If you want to purchase VisionFX, there's a link in the description of this video, or go to distinctplugins.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.